Before the release of the latest Magic Lantern build, the Bilal Crop Mood, it was difficult to have an external monitor connected to the USM without problems. You had to set the modes with low bit depth, low resolutions and turn off the audio. Now with the crop mode all this remains in the past. In this video we'll see how all the modes now work fine with an external monitor, even if you have to be careful with some setting in a few modes that we are going to discuss. In addition, very important, I will talk about the use of the autofocus option with electronic lenses, how to customize the, the buttons for a better experience and what are my go-to settings for all modes. So this video is a complement to my previous video, whose link I leave in the description below, where I explain step by step how to set the crop mode to get the best from it. For the test, I used a Fieldward 7-inch monitor, which I connected to my camera using a mini HDMI adapter. My first setting were 5 to K, 12-bit, and apart from the high frame rate tests, I always set sound recording on. At the beginning, I had red recording, but it turned quickly to orange, and I got more than a minute of recording. Then I set for 8K 12-bit and it worked very well continuous green. I had a problem with 42K 14-bit 60 by 9 aspect ratio and it was because I didn't set the correct aspect ratio under the row settings. After adjusting the correct aspect ratio to 60 by 9, I got orange recording. So I decided to lower the bit depth to 12. After that, I got continuous green recording. Then I tried 3x3 three three mode starting with 1080p 14-bit and it worked very well, giving me green continuous recording. For the high frame rate tests, I got the best results setting the Mentum option both to 10-bit and disable the audio. Both tests gave me orange recording for more than a minute. Two 5K 14 bit worked very well. Green continuous recording all the time. And before with the previous builds, this would be impossible in 14 bit and two 8K give me the best results in 12-bit with a green continuous recording. Sometimes it can happen that turning off the external monitor, the USM display remains black. To get again the image, click on your customized zoom button and then click again. This will fix the issue. For the autofocus test, I used the two lenses, the Canon 15-45 kit lens and the Sigma Art 18-35 lens. With the Canon kit lens, you have to switch from manual focus to autofocus in the Canon menu, while in the Sigma and other lenses, there isn't this option, because you switch between manual focus and autofocus directly in the lens body. When you switch from MF to AF, the AF method will be automatically changed to FlexiZone Single.
This is the kit lens. So, how does it work? Before recording, for a more precise results, I suggest to zoom in and press half shutter, this way. Then return to the regular view and start recording. Later in this video, I will explain how I customize the zoom button. Again, choose your frame, zoom in, press half shutter and zoom out. Let's try the Sigma lens. Zoom in and press half shutter. Then zoom out and you are ready to film. Again, zoom in, press half shutter. Zoom out and start recording. You can also press half shutter without zoom in. If we check, the image is in focus, but zooming in before focusing is more secure and precise. If you use 3x3 modes, you can get a black or frizzy image like this when you are in autofocus mode. If this happens, you can zoom in and then start to recording. This will fix the problem. So I suggest don't use autofocus when you film in 3x3 modes. And better stay with manual focus and select flexi zone white area. If you want to use magic zoom for focusing after starting recording, you have to set kill global view off and use manual focus. So what I do is before shooting, zoom in and manually pull the focus. Then zoom out and start recording. While recording with magic zoom activated, you can press half shutter and pull the focus with the help of the little magic zoom window. And after focusing, you can press again half shutter to hide magic zoom. If you want it back, press again half shutter. When you install crop mode, you need to be sure that image quality is set to raw. and AF method set to flexi zone wide area. Be sure that 240 MHz under SD overclock is set to SDR 104. All SD cards which are capable of 90 MB per second write speed should be work fine with SDR 104. On the other hand, some SD card like SanDisk 95 MB per second will work better when SDR 50 is on. Under the Preference tab, you can customize your buttons for a better experience. I leave half shutter off because I use it for other functions like the magic zoom. As we saw previously in the video, I use the set button to zoom in 10 times. I click the set button to zoom in. Then I pull the focus and finally I start recording. I use the info button for false color. Sometimes this function is very useful. Up and down arrows for controlling the ISO. Arrow down to lower the ISO. And arrow up to rise the ISO. Left and right arrows for aperture. In this case, you have to click and hold for about 1-2 seconds the right arrow of the wheel in order to activate the function. Then you'll be able to change the aperture of your electronic lens scrolling the wheel. In addition, if you only scroll the wheel, you'll be able to change the shutter speed. If you want to lock the shutter speed in order to avoid unwanted changes, you have to select Movie Tweaks under the Movie tab, and then set Shutter Lock On. Now the shutter is locked. Finally, these are my go-to settings for all the modes. Zebras set to 100. And I set the histogram scaling to linear.
Finally, in the display tab, I set the LV peaking to slightly sharper, and this helps for pulling focus with a sharper image. So it's all, and I hope you have found this video helpful. See you soon. Ciao.